In this video, we're going to continue talking about curvature. In particular, we're going to discuss the curvature of a circle. So of a circle. So curvature is a measure of how sharply a curve bends, right? So if you have a curve like this, and this is P, and this is Q, then the curvature at P, well, it bends way more. So the curvature at P is greater than the curvature at Q, right? There's a sharper bend at P than there is at Q. Now, in a circle, it would appear that uh, the way it's bending uh, is the same everywhere. So that's the first remark. So one, a circle has the same curvature at every point. So a circle has the same curvature, the same curvature at every point. So at every single point. And the second remark is the formula for the curvature of a circle. It's given by k equals 1 over r. Okay, that's the formula for the curvature of a circle, where r is the radius of the circle. r is the radius. And this should make some sense intuitively. Let's, let's try to make sense of it. So if you have a little circle, like a tiny little circle, I'll draw one here. That's, that's okay. That's my little circle. Um, it looks like it's bending more than if you had a big circle, right? So little circles ha should have a bigger curvature. So if you have a little circle, right, you have a little r. Your radius is small. So you have 1 over a little number, which is a big number. So if you have a little circle, you have a little r. So you have a big number. So you have a big, you have a big curvature. So you have a big k. You have a big k. So if you have a little circle, you have a big curvature, right? Because it's 1 over a little number, and that's a big number. Think about like 1 over 0 0.001. That's pretty huge, right? If you have a big circle, if you have a big circle, you have a big r. Right? You have a big r. So you have 1 over a big number, like 1 over 50, 1 over 1,000. So this means this is a little number. So if you have a big circle, uh, you have a big r, so you have 1 over a big number that gives you a little number. So that means that you have a little k. So the formula does make sense intuitively. So when r is small, so smaller circles will give you a bigger uh, curvature. Let's do an example just so you see how this works. And bigger circles will give you a smaller curvature. So say we have uh, r of t. And I don't know, how about um, 2 cosine 3t i hat plus 2 sine 3t j hat. So this is rigged. Obviously, this is a circle. It's pretty easy to show that this is a circle, right? You would call this piece here x. You would call this piece here y. And then you would have x equals 2 cosine 3t. And then y equals 2 sine 3t. Solving for cosine on the left-hand side, we have cosine of 3t equals x over 2. And solving for sine here, we have sine of 3t equals y over 2. Then we can use one of the most famous theorems from trigonometry, right? Cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. So we have cosine squared 3t plus sine squared 3t, and that's equal to 1. But cosine 3t is x over 2. So this is x over 2 quantity squared plus, I'm going kind of fast, uh, y over 2 quantity squared. We did these before when we talked about um, per, uh, rewriting things uh, in, as plane curves, right? Taking a vector valued function and writing it as a plane curve. This is x squared over 4 plus y squared over 4 equals 1. 
multiply by 4, and piece of cake. You have x squared plus y squared equals 4. This is a circle centered at the origin with radius 2. So the radius here is 2, and so the curvature would simply be 1 over 2. So I kind of rushed through that because um, you can just look at this and, and you know it's a circle, right? So if I put a 5 here and a 5 here, it's, it's a circle of radius 5, right? You put a 7 there and a 7 there, it's a circle of radius 7. And then in that case, the curvature would be 1 over 7. So that's it.